That was a bigger ice cube than I intended here. here you, you can murder somebody with that. There you go. Welcome one and all. Harmontown is still briefly in session. Let's welcome the Game Master, the master of games, the master of one and all, the, the star of Harmon Quest, Mr. Spencer Crittenden, everybody. Oh yeah. Spencer, what's gonna happen when we don't, when we don't have underwear ads to do together anymore? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to sell something else. Maybe we can become traveling salesmen. Like vacuum cleaners and encyclopedias and whatnot? Yeah, like a death of a salesman. All right. I'm Willie Loman. <laughs> the death of two salesmen. Yeah. Let's bring out the mayor of Harmon Town, Mr. Dan Harmon, everybody. Hip hop. You don't stop. Rap and rap and rap's all you got. Hippity, hippity, hippity hop. Yo. Hippity hop. My name is Mr. Rap. Yo. I like to go into a trap because I'm self-destructive. I have a question for you, Mr. Rap. Yes. Why do they call you Mr. Rap? Because I like to go into traps. And that rhymes. I'm actually not very good at rapping. I'm more passionate about trapping myself. I'm self-destructive. I love to be trapped. Everybody trap me! What's your favorite kind of trap to be trapped in? Like, is it like a snare or a... A bohemian spike pit. A deceptively peaceful name for one of the most brutal traps devised by the human mind. Tell me how it works. Well, it's a trapezoidal hole, so you can't get out. If you get trapped, you scream and shout. You fall into the pit and the spikes go through. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? My name is Mr. Rap. I'm here to say I fell into one of those today, and it really made me happy all the way. By the way, also gay. Ooh. Now, now, I don't know if that just now, okay, all right, Mr. Rap, I, I think that uh, obviously you know a lot about traps. But I, I think you're kind of burying the lead that you're you're pretty a good rapper too. Nah. Oh, come on, Mr. Rap. Nah, come on. You, you, I, I think you're using traps as a camouflage nah. for your actual love of freestyle rapping. Well, I flow to the mic and I do much better. I fucked your mama so hard I made her a sweater. Out of cum. It was woven. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Beethoven, a rap. Mr. Rap, can I yeah, can I'm, I, sorry. Can I yeah, 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 I'm sorry, what? Excuse All me for a second. Yes? You made a, you made a sweater out of cum? Yes. Because the ropey knots were very ropey. Did you go again? Yeah, all right. Oh, shit. All right, let's give it up for Mr. Rap. Not, not, not only a rapper, but a big trap enthusiast and also a cum weaver. He loves to, he loves to be trapped and he loves, he loves, oh, he loves throwing his ropey knots. Cream weaver. Yeah. I believe I can make you a sweater. <laughs> Imagine the discipline it would take to come a sweater. Yeah. Oh, oh, or the patience of the person that was getting the sweater weaved upon them. Yeah. How long do you think it would take to come a sweater? Uh, weeks. I don't know. All right. Um, I only have one thing. It just says special plugs. I, I, uh, so, uh, look, I don't understand electronics or capitalism enough to, to know why this is done to consumers. But, like... I, I just, and I can't, I know that my voice won't be loud enough and nothing will happen. I just, I just, I, I, I want an air of frustration that has specifically has to do with the electronic appliances that, ha that for some reason in a world of appliances that seem satisfied with a 12 volt adapter or a, you know, a nine volt or whatever, you got all the different sizes, but you can, you can buy them all at an electronic store if you lose them. And then there's these things, these proprietary plugs, like these computer things that they have that you look at the, there's like a power brick and then there's those fucking things. Specialized dongles, Dan. The, uh, 
And it's just like you lose. I, I wrote I wrote an Amazon review today. It was like, everybody was like, I love this thing. This is a great USB hub. It's like pretty pricey, but it runs like a dream. And 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 I was like, four stars. If you lose the the plug, you're fucked. Like like I, I I'm sorry. Four stars. What what is the plug looking like? I don't know. It's a D. It's a DC twenty volt nine amp fucking starfish. Oh, like a little circle one. It's like a, a you can't you, you type that on the internet and you you you, you sticks albums come up like it, it's not. <laughs> there's no way to replace it. So I just have this aluminum brick. A, all right, let's bring out our guest. Um, wait, 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 before we do, uh, does anybody have a pen that they don't care much about? My pen's oh fucked. shit, a who's, pen. got, who's got a pen? Just just chuck it on stage like like I threw the ice out. Oh dear. Fuck! He just gets buried in pens. That was a good throw. That, that one hit me in the face, so I'm keeping a, that one. A good throw. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about our our, our pal that's gonna about uh, about to come out. Kimbo yeah. Slice. <laughs> Let's bring out Wait, Kimbo dead, right? <laughs> Slice. Is he the McCartney? Of the kids in a hall, I the Lennon. The, no, I would say he's the George Harrison. Like, no. Oof. What, uh, <laughs> let's he's ask him. Let's, let's welcome Dave Foley, everybody. Dave Foley! Dave Foley! Dave Foley! Hello. Oh, hello. hello. Dave Foley. I, I, I'm, I believe I'm the Billy Preston. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. oh. Wait, is that the guy from the... Is that the guy, no, wait, who's the, who's the guy that got left behind? The, was it oh, Pete that was Best? Pete Best. Yeah, yeah. Pete Best. Well, was, there was Pete Best, then there was Stuart Sutcliffe, uh, whose brain exploded. Um, yeah, no one talks about him. Yeah, I know, and that was a pretty exciting story, having your brain explode. Yeah. <laughs> He was he really has, talented too, right? Yeah, he was. Uh, no, he was terrible. He was a terrible bass player. Damn, I was close. Yeah, he was a shit bass player. <laughs> yeah, but apparently you had a fifty-fifty chance, Spencer. Teacher. You had a fifty-fifty chance yeah. on that one. Yeah. I was right on the edge of that yeah, fifty. Yeah, though. yeah. That's he, where you uh, live, right on the edge. He played with his back to the audience, uh, much like Sid Vicious would years later. <laughs> and uh, Miles Miles Davis. And Miles Davis, but they had death just because he was an asshole, though. Great, uh, because he hated his crowd. Yeah. I once saw Miles Davis playing in the round on a stage that rotated. So he and he <laughs> spent the entire night going... going <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so he must have been in, he was in hell then, right? Like oh, that, yeah, that, was, that's the worst thing you there could was, do. There was one little tunnel that, where the uh, people came out of, and that was the only place he could look at. <laughs> and he just had, like, he had to like, spot like a ballet dancer. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were in we were in Las Vegas and like the we 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 took mushrooms and they kind of didn't take, but um, everybody ended up in one hotel room, and the all of a sudden the mushrooms started to kick in while Rob Schraub was describing the Neil Diamond concert he had, he had gone to with a couple <laughs> of the other people. The rest of us had all split up and had a failure of a mushroom trip, but then it was just Schraub describing the Neil Diamond concert because there was this malfunctioning. Platform that uh -huh. Neil Diamond was like, everybody, uh, uh, get, put it together for the brass section or whatever. And there, so like, <laughs> like, like, and there were like these platforms that weren't working. It was like <laughs> Shrub just for hours kept doing his impression of Neil Diamond going like, they're coming to what the fuck, what, what the fuck, whoa. <laughs> it, it, it was it was really funny. We were just like all laughing like eight year olds for four hours. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think yep. the. the, the I think the first time I met you, Dave, because now, now you, you, you and I have been yep. on the road quite a bit. Doing, For about a year. Doing now. hilarious... Yeah. Uh, the who's li li yeah, Hilarious live. improvs. Any, yes. And the first time I met you was at your old house with the, yes. the crazy, precipitous, like Machu Picchu staircase. Yes. yes. It was and like then all the lights went out, and there was no way to get out without breaking your ass on the way out. Yes. That was our last party in that house, the, up, on, up in the Hollywood Hills, where we had some... some we had, we had a party once that, that blocked traffic all the way from Lookout Mountain all the way down to Sunset. What? Uh, okay, I remember. I, I, you, we, we have met several times, yes. but I bet not there. But I was, there, I was at one of those parties at your house in the you, 90s. Yeah, in yes. In the late 90s. And you may have been, there were a lot of parties at my house that I wasn't even at. <laughs> uh, and yeah there, was, yeah, there would be huge parties. Rob Cohen and I used to throw right, our, right, our okay. birthday parties. Oh, yeah, that makes sense now. Canadian Rob Cohen. Yeah. And then, but the party you were at was our last party. Yeah, and the power went out. There was a huge blackout. The whole, all of Laurel Canyon was blacked out. 
And, and, but, but, and we had no furniture because we were moving out of the house. Right. So, there so, yeah, no so there, was no, there was nothing to do or see. Well, there was anyway. lots of booze. Yeah, there was lots of booze. And the was, pool was heated. I didn't get that far. Oh, I walked in there, the lights went out, and then, then we all had to kind of just like hold hands and walk down the hill together and get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Here's, right. how, here's how old we are. I remember being in your backyard when I tested my first cell phone with <laughs> Rob Schraub. We, we, we were in L.A. for a while before we got our first cell phones, and he, we got them at the same time, so they were one number apart. <laughs> They were which number, made us the biggest and, dorks, and and, six, and, uh, yeah. and I remember uh, what what what's the guy's name? This was before they even invented flip phones. They, 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 the no, technology were, to flip open a phone didn't yeah. exist yet. They, no, these were clamshells. I remember distinctly because we were testing them at this party, and we were like in a backyard, and. Uh, it was like Dave Rath, I remember specifically. Yeah, that makes sense. Who was this com- comedy <laughs> manager? It was like he was the he, you know, like this is a guy you, at that time that you don't want to look like an idiot in front of. I guess you <laughs> yeah. know his, his reputation precedes him as whatever. You're like, oh god, there's that guy. I've heard, already heard of him, and he doesn't know who I am. And then we're like in the backyard, and Shrab and I just try, don't even know if these phones work. So we're caught. We called each other, and then like. Like just, I just remember the the mortifying like realization that everyone was looking at us, and we were clearly just like these new yeah. kids in L.A. who didn't know what cell phones were, and were testing them in the backyard like walkie talkies, <laughs> and uh, and how dorky that felt. Yeah. Have, have you ever considered, Dave, uh, what beetle you would be in the kids in the hall, or who, who like? Which which beetle? Yeah, yeah. Like we, are, are I thought you, we settled are, that earlier. Yeah. No, no, yeah. But, but let's yeah. let you weigh in. Be- I, I don't. Uh, ha- have you been compared to like you? You are the Lennon or the McCartney or the Harrison? Or uh, the- I don't know. I don't know because we have an extra one. Yeah, because there's five um, of you. Um, uh, so uh, I don't know. I I don't, maybe maybe McCartney. I think you're like, I think you're like a McCartney. Know. Yeah, because you're yeah. because you're cute. And I was yeah, and I'm and I'm nicer than McCullough. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so McCullough, McCullough's but, the Lennon for sure. Yeah. 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 What's, what's great about uh, like going on the road with uh, with Dave is we, we travel around and now you've you've been sober for for some good long time. Almost five years now. Yeah. And we'll be like in Atlanta, like Georgia, and you're like, oh, oh yeah, I went to jail there. <laughs> I passed out over there. <laughs> like, like, like it's it's fun to go on the Dave Foley. I I used to do <laughs> yeah. bad things to her. How many yeah. times have you been told? Because there was a lot of. Uh, Drag work. I don't know what the what the right term for it is. Like you, you and the kids in the hall. Like you guys, there were no women in the. Uh, we called it lady time. Lady time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how many times were you told how sexy you were as a viable woman? Um. <laughs> or was that just me and it, my no, mom was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> discussing how hot you were in a wig? I would say it was probably on average every time. Because it, it was like all the other guys. It was like, oh, everyone's yeah. funny. Every, everyone's a lady. That's funny. But then it, yeah. it was like, oof. Hubba, yeah, I hubba. Remember, yeah. <laughs> I know. Kevin, well, Kevin in particular used to develop, like, uh, fall in love with some of the women characters I would play. And it was like really get unnerving because he would just stare a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember, one, I remember uh, and like our crew, like we had like old CBC crew, which, you know, like government employees. And uh, they, at first they all hated us, but then they sort of grew to like us. I'd get like this, these old crew guys coming up to me going, uh, Dave, you're going to be the redhead tonight. Oh! <laughs> uh, like, oh, no, not tonight. <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, all right. Is there a technique? Is there something you tap into or uh, when, you, when you would play a woman? Uh, a, a lifetime of low testosterone mm-hmm. uh, came in handy. Uh, do, do you know that you were uh, on Jeopardy last night? I heard that. Yeah, I didn't see it, but I was, I, I was Kevin wa- McDonald texted me. I was watching it with Laura it. last night, and uh, they said uh, it, there was a category of Canadian television. I'm like, there's no way there's not going to be a Kids in the Hall uh, <laughs> yeah. like, like, answer on that one. But I, I, I think they only said you and Kevin, maybe one brother. I, I saw the, uh, the screen capture, yeah. There was, was it just a, you two? Uh, yeah, it said uh, Canadian comedy troupe. Including it, Dave Foley and Kevin McDonald. Yeah, so Bruce is fucking fucked off right now. Right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got yeah, he's got one fewer TVs in his house. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it really it's a, that's 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 what happens, huh? Yeah. That's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Um, I always imagine now because I have a pool for the first time, so now I'm always mm. characterizing everything. I was like, well, look, this isn't gonna. I just I just want to keep that pool filled, and I like to imagine like if I 
if I eat it on a Rick and Morty script, like a couple gallons comes out of the pool. Like the, the, it's just like I'll be down there in like two feet of water, like kind of typing. Um, I, I remember the first time I saw your face on television when I was still in Milwaukee. It was the uh, the the monologue, uh, a good attitude towards menstruation. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the. Uh, Please give them time to apply. Them. Please <laughs> don't. That was literally the first time I was. I, I had no idea what the show was. You know, it was back then you flipped through channels, like mm-hmm. so. It was like just boom. There was your your adorable apple face, your <laughs> yeah. your pure handsome. Uh, I'd hit it if it was a woman face, and uh, <laughs> uh, hit hit it like sexually, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's make that perfectly clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he means hit it Not in a, a European in way. fun, he, sexual way. He means strike up a conversation and work his way up to consensual sex with it. <laughs> um, but that was a great monologue. Did you write that? I did, yeah. And it still holds up, I think. I, well, I haven't, I haven't like, gone yeah. back and watched it, but like, like, comedy does not age well. And, and then like the monologue is about how you have a good attitude towards menstruation. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I would believe that if you read it today, it, would, it wouldn't be like, oh, that didn't age well. <laughs> no, I think it's, yeah, it stands up, I think. You know, I, do you remember it? Do it. Sure, uh, was, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't remember all. I, Hi, I my name it. is Dave Foley, yeah, and I, I have... have a good attitude towards menstruation. That's right, I'm the guy. <laughs> the guy with a good attitude towards menstruation. Oh, I know a lot of men are made uncomfortable by this monthly miracle, but not me. No, I embrace it. I embrace it the way some men embrace the weekend. I look forward to it the way a child... I anticipate it the way a child anticipates Christmas. <laughs> uh... I can't remember anymore. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I, 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 but I, I remember. I remember the, the the phrase "celebrate her fecundity." Her isn't fecundity. there? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, fetch herbal tea. Er, fetch, fetch, fetch herbal, herbal tea. tea and pamperin, and I'd mop her brow and admire her fecundity. <laughs> People don't call each other fecund anymore. No. Well, so few of us are. Yeah. Uh, you know. I'm, I'm occasionally fecund. Yeah, how would you know? Uh, have, you ever, have you ever put it to the test? <laughs> I guess not. No, well, yeah. there you go. Me, I, my, I, my sperm are so motile, I could be getting someone pregnant right now. Yeah? Yeah. You, you, you have airborne sperm. My sperm just, my sperm yeah, sneak yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of the night, they turn yeah. off you're the, like they the, turn the, West, you're like the West Nile virus of, of, yeah. of, 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 of date rape? I don't yeah. know what it yeah. is. <laughs> Why is it, do you think, when you... Uh, I don't know how it got rapey. I don't. You know. <laughs> I think I, I, I'm just saying that it was. I un- think my sperm go out and they just they just yeah. they, they talk a good game. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, you you have charming airborne sperm. Yeah. Yeah. They're Canadian sperm. They're not going to sell each other out to get to the egg. They're, no. No. They're yes. wingman. So they, they're they like those chipmunks. After you. No. After you. <laughs> Are and also, a, uh, in Canada, that you, your sperm has to be on the air. Uh, uh, how, how, what's the percentage of a sperm uh, uh, airtime on... Well, you have, uh, your sperm, yes, all of your sperm have to be 20% Canadian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. And they have to speak f- French. And uh, English, yes. You have to come in French. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so most unwanted children are Dave Foley's and Colin Mockery's. That, yeah. That's, that's yeah. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. So, Somebody <laughs> laughed because it was too close to home. <laughs> are you are you a Toronto guy? I am. Yeah. Like, is that everybody? Was everybody from Toronto in the, in the kids? Uh, most of us. Well, oh, also, you like, did more than kids in the hall. I was like, no, I'm like, was everybody like? It's, uh, was, is, is, is Lord Michaels from Toronto too? Or? He is. Yeah. Yeah. He is from Toronto. Yeah, uh, you you were talking about the uh, what, what, the origin story of you guys with Lauren, like, uh, and the, the uh, brain candy. I love that movie. You're alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, what was the deal? Like, why did that get kind of like di- didn't get released? Uh, well, it got released, but it was it was supposed to be like released on something like a thousand screens. Uh, but the troupe, and at this point, I had I had quit the troupe. Uh, uh, but so they were still <laughs> making the movie, and uh, and uh, they fought very hard for a character named Cancer Boy. Uh, which is funny because it's a character that I originally wrote into our TV show. Yeah. Um, 
So they fought to keep Cancer Boy in, and, and uh, Paramount really wanted Cancer Boy out. And then uh, I guess they uh, they uh, they finally they, I guess Bruce got on the phone and badgered somebody at Paramount, and they finally said, "All right, you can have Cancer Boy." And they called up Lauren and said, "Hey, we won. We got Cancer Boy." And Lauren went, "Oh, that's wonderful." <laughs> And so as a result of keeping Cancer Boy in, they cut it from uh, something like 1,000 screens to 400 <laughs> screens, and they cut all of the television advertising. <laughs> so, uh, and you know, that's not important to a film release. Yeah, because you, 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 yeah, you want to reach the people that are um, at the rodeo Yeah, <laughs> yeah. with Cancer Boy. Mm-hmm. Just put, put something <laughs> on the side of a steer. Yeah. Um, so can I, can I talk about the origin story of Dave coming on to Who's Live Anyway? Yeah, uh, sure. R- R- Ryan, like we were in Chicago. Ryan got ill and couldn't do the shows, and we were fucked because we had like a bunch of gigs to do. And our our, our agent at APA, Josh, called you up like what at midnight? Uh, it was eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah, uh, L.A. time. It, it yeah. was yeah, it was one or two Chicago time. And they're like, okay, we have Dave Foley flying in tomorrow and to save this. Yeah. And Dave Foley came in. You hadn't done improv in... 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. And I think the very first scene that we did, you and I were on the ground scissoring each other. Uh-huh. I was like, this, yeah. guy, this guy is perfect. Like, I got it. Like, <laughs> Still got it. Like, yeah. You were up for anything. And you do, you, you do the most abstract characters. Like, like, like it's, it, I love you doing our version of crap improv because you do like, <laughs> like kind of abstruse, like, like right field characters. Like v- very weird. It's mm-hmm. fucking great. But you and I were laying on the ground and just yeah. absolutely scissor fucking each other. I can't why. Huh? But I can't remember why. No. Um, there was, oh, don't ask why. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you guys do some improv from this? Like, I, don't, I don't know if you're aware of this. That's what we've been doing oh, here. Yeah, <laughs> <guess I'm> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Have you been reading from a script? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, who, who, who here is from out of town? Who's from out of town? Raise your hand. Oh, shit. All of you? Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right, you met him right here. What's your name? Nadia. Nadia. Are, are you Russian or? I'm, I'm from London. London. Yeah. Well, why do you have a Russian name? I'm, my family is Serbian. You're Serbian? Serbian. Oh, well. Nadezhda. Well, Steima. Well, Nadezhda, there. Fuck you. Uh, all right, Nadia. Nadia, give Dan a position that people only do in Serbia, like, like, like a physical position, like, 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 a, like a pose. That, that would be a very Serbian pose. Um, <laughs> that sounds good. You're going to get water from the well? You're going to get water. Dan? Uh, uh. No, no, get, up, get out of your seat, Dan. Take your mic. <laughs> Dan, you're going to be going to get water from the well. Is anybody here from Croatia? <laughs> <laughs> Any, any any other Balkans yeah. here? Do you have any Balkans? Who who uh, who's here from? Uh, we'll South get to Rwanda later. Rwanda. <laughs> who, who, who's here from South America? Central America. It's America. <laughs> there we go. You right here. Well, uh, give. That's our spot. Uh, you, what's your name? Zen. Zen. Like yeah, I know what Zen means. <laughs> like Buddhism. She had to explain. Yeah. Zen. Well, she's just telling you because you might have thought she's her name, and she might have right. thought it was Zem. Or yeah. she's. What's okay? Yeah. What's, so, your, so, so what's your real name that people can't pronounce? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Stop fighting, everyone. Zen. You're not very Zen. 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 Give Dave Foley a Zen posture or pose. Okay. Cool. Let's do this. No, no. Just say it. Oh, you, you're going to come up and do oh, it for us? P- position oh, yeah. All right, that's fine, too. All right, Zen, show. Oh, wow. Welcome Zen to the stage, everybody. <laughs> show Dave Foley what he's going to do. All We're, improv should be d- like just, this. D- give him a... Fi- Hi, Dave Foley. I'm Zen. Hi, Zen. But I don't want you to tell you... Can I get a name? Zem? Zem with an M? Oh, yes! Yeah. Zem. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to do this now. <laughs> All right. You, you got that? All right. Let's give it up for Zen, everybody. Zen, thank Let's you. Let's give it up for Zen. Zen, go away. All right, so here we are. So Dave, Dave has this pose. Dan is getting water from the well. And now we are going to take you 
to a scene that uh, encapsulates these physical positions. The I'm pretty sure it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. What other... <laughs> So I should have been thinking of something funny this whole time. No, no, no. That's scripted. No. Okay. That, that, that's a rookie mistake, Dan. All right. Uh. <laughs> okay. So if I do one cartwheel, you'll give me that human head. <laughs> right? Freeze, freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Are you both frozen? He tapped him. I didn't tap him. You did. Okay, I might have tapped him. Maybe you're just—it was an encouraging tap. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> For one night and one night only. Canadian Elvis Presley. <laughs> oh shit! Hey everybody. I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> We did improv. You see, it's like riding a bicycle, David. It's it is. like riding a bicycle. It, although it doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> but it's fun, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was weird because when they called, as I said, it was like 11 o'clock at night, and I remember uh, uh, my, my, I, was, I was tired, so my only thought was, well, I got to drive my daughter to something tomorrow. So if I can get someone to drive her, I'll be there. <laughs> that was what I called. Uh, and you, so you were on a plane like at 6 a.m.? Like, like yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, I had to be on a flight at 6 a.m. to get there in time for the show. You saved our bacon. And, uh, our Canadian yeah. bacon. <laughs> it was funny because I got on the plane and I went, oh, I don't improvise. <laughs> um, yeah. Well... That brought back some bad flashbacks for me. <laughs> Were I, you ever I, in an improv group? Yeah, I did that when I was uh, when I was a little tyke. Yeah, that's, uh -huh. a, that's that's how Dan and I met. We we did comedy sports. Oh, and, you were in comedy and sports. I was in LA comedy sports, and he was and he and Rob were were Milwaukee comedy sports, yeah. and we met in like '94, I think. Yeah. So yeah, kids and whole, we were all theater sports up in Canada. All right. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. 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 Keith yeah. Johnston. Keith Johnston. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that lit up all the wrong parts of my brain. I just like I I I, I, I was it was it, that 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 I that that thing of like playing to the, you know, trying to get the laugh and like I it just it was I was never good at it and uh -huh. uh, it it always made me feel sad. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you mean you weren't good at playing for the laugh? I saw you be funny and go for the laugh all the time. Well, I think it's like those freeze games and like kind of, I don't know, there's certain places. You're more of a long stuff. form guy, Dan. No, yeah. Can I get a, uh, yeah. can I uh. get a Dutch playwright? <laughs> <laughs> Just run on stage. We're going to do an eight hour Herald. Yes. <laughs> I heard, I, I heard Ibsen. I heard Ibsen. Can we, oh, uh, let, let's get a title of an Ibsen play. The Dollhouse. The Dollhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some better lighting, please? <laughs> Perfect, thank you. <laughs> we now take you to uh, Act Two of The Dollhouse by Henrik Ibsen. What have I done? <laughs> we now take you to Act Three <laughs> of Ibsen's The Dollhouse. <laughs> Which wire? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> How could you not be sure? <laughs> Hold on to your butts, <laughs> Dollhouse. <laughs> you see, improv's uh, not, it, it hasn't changed over time. Improv is still improv. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure that was Enemy of the People. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see that movie, uh, Executive Decision? Uh, uh, nope. It was pretty bad. 
But they did one fun thing, which is that Steven Seagal was in it, and he was on oh. all the posters, and it was like, Steven Seagal, Kurt Russell, uh, and uh, Oliver Platt are executive decision. And uh, How can they all be, how can they all three be executive decisions? It's that what, was the name of their improv group. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, in like the first eight minutes of the movie, Steven Seagal just without warning just gets sucked out of the airplane. <laughs> and that, that, that's part of that. It's like, oh, they had their whole mission planned and he was like the alpha and then he just dies right away. And then they, it was kind of a fun thing. Was that in the script or they just thought, fuck, I, I think we hate a, this guy. I think that was yeah, the first week of shooting rewrite. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it could have evolved out of working with, 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 with Seagal. Yeah. I don't know. He's, he's supposed to be the worst person, right? I heard he actually hurts people in those actions. Action scenes, like yeah. he's like, I yeah. can't, I, I can't act, so I'm just really going to break your arm. He he yeah. he will he will punch and actually make contact with the stunt guys, which you're not supposed to do. But no, do and it. it's and, and arguably easy not to do. And if you yeah. can, if you and complain, if you are, if you're a martial artist, yeah, you really should be even God. better at not hitting people. And it's arguably your job not to hit people, yeah. right? <laughs> and if you complain, you're allowed to not be on the movie anymore. But also, I think there's a, there's a great story, and I forget who it was, but like, uh, the stunt coordinator completely busted his ass. Like, like just like just counter punched him and just knocked ah. him out. <laughs> That's yeah. good. I want to fuck rip. you, Seagal. Also, <laughs> at some point, he just started wearing shower curtains. He got so fat <laughs> that he just wore like not even mumus. Mumus is too polite a word <laughs> for what Steven Seagal yeah. started wearing. Yeah, mumus are too fitted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay, yes. there's been a change of plans. We're going to go down there. We're going to be ghosts. <laughs> Only ghosts. We're going <laughs> to... There's this movie where I, I put a clip of it on my Instagram. Uh, uh, if you scroll back, you'll see it. But it's, mm. a, it's, a, like, like, it's just Steven a weird... Like, I mean, like, clearly, it's like the, he, he, he got he, 300 pounds and he painted a Dracula widow's peak on his head and like he, start, he kept doing like <laughs> even shittier and shittier movies and he kept... He kept like, if you watch those latter-day movies, yeah. he's like... He's like clearly like oh, I'm not gonna re memorize the script. I'll, I'll just I'll just yeah. I'll just talk. I'm Steven Seagal. Mm, yeah. What what am I doing in this scene? Telling yeah. my sidekick that we're on a mission. Okay, we're on a mission. It's gonna be good. We now take you to Act Two of <laughs> Steven Seagal, <laughs> as portrayed by Dan Harmon. Dan, whatever it's called. Uh, uh, Damien. Uh, we got a mission. Okay. It's nothing to get excited about. Right. We're gonna go fight some bad guys. Okay. It's just a big deal. All right. I'm Oliver Platt. I'm just here for comic relief. <laughs> mm. Mm. Just get in the get in the boat. Mm. Get in the boat. All right. I'm just got to get get in the boat, and we're on the bayou. Mm -hmm. On the bayou. <laughs> It's just a mission on the bayou. Right. Where, where, are we, where are we rowing to? Cage. Uh, <laughs> it's where Cajuns are from. Cajuns. Cajuns. Yeah. How long you been in uh, de demolitions? Well, it's kind of a family thing. My. My grandfather was in demolitions, and, and my father, and uh, when I came of age. Hold on. Oh, okay. I'm going to make a three-point turn. I saw an alligator. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> hey, alligator, mm. you like picking on tough guys? <laughs> I mean, are you a tough guy? You like picking mm. on non-tough guys? What, you can't talk? Uh, what, are you some kind of reptile? Come here. <clears throat> I lost my oars. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be connected to the boat. And the, uh, and the alligator is a protected species, you know. It's, uh, it's not, not from where I'm standing. No. Oh, the wash is really tossing our boat around. Damn it. It's you! What? Down there in the boat! It's Kurt Russell! I just I just want my truck back. 
This is a boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chop, 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 chop. <laughs> there goes the chopper. <laughs> You see, improv is not hard. It's, no. not a, it's not a difficult art form. No. It's all you... Yeah. It, it's, like, uh, it's like painting if all painting was Jackson Pollock. No. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to make any sense. <laughs> was Jackson... Who, 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 Dave, who Dave, for you, uh, you, yourself excluded, who do you yeah. think was the most naturally funny kid from the kids in the home. Uh, <laughs> Naturally. Like, it's like born born funny, made you laugh the most. Kevin McDonald. Yeah, Kevin, yeah. 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 Open right. the door! <laughs> Open the door! <laughs> <clears throat> who was the least who was the least funny? <laughs> who didn't have a funny bone in their whole body? That's varied over the years. <laughs> uh. I'm kidding, of course. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't I had a good di- t- time uh, in, uh, uh, drinking with uh, with uh, McKinney. I had I hadn't uh-huh. I hadn't met had met I'd met Scott. I was collecting my kids in the hall encounters like a like a Voltron, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. I completed. Well, I t- I've actually ne- never met Bruce. No, um, either have I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I but I finally met McKinney fairly yeah. recently. Recently, we were both oh, in a you, wow. like kind of fun horror movie together, and we we we. we Hung out at Tribeca, and he was uh, he mm-hmm. was a real fun fun guy to to hang out with. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever? And you can say no comment, and let's move on. But I'm I'm curious because I'm more. Is it like like like? Did, did, did you guys ever? have actual were there incidents that were dramatic falling outs or anything or was it more kind uh, of like we had we had a falling out that lasted 35 years <laughs> uh we yeah we fought we always fought but was it uh, passive aggressive or was it no it like, was a lot of yelling really? uh and with scott there was a lot of breaking furniture uh there was yeah it was uh it was vicious for uh, right from the very start of it. Who was your first ally? Was it you and Kevin? Yeah, Ke- well, Kevin and I were in a group with a guy named Luch Kazmiri, and the three of us never fought. We were like always very nice to each other, and then we joined up with uh, Mark and Bruce and other guys, Frank Van Keek and Gary Campbell, uh, and uh, and oh, and yeah, I think that's it. Those guys, and uh, and they were horrible. <laughs> uh, they were just the worst human beings I'd ever met. Because you, you you were used to being w- with people that you trusted and liked, and th- there was yeah. no, there was no fighting. Yeah, and then yeah. you found out that it could be political and crap all the time. Yeah, because they like we would you know be supportive. I mean, they asked each other, and they would give notes like, "Oh, you know, my problem with that sketch is that you're a piece of shit as a human being." <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of the level of debate. <laughs> I remember, I remember our improv troupe, the Dead Ale Wives. Uh, it, it, uh, w- w- uh, the like, yeah, we would do things like uh, there was one. We would have notes sessions after the show, which mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, can we not? Like, like it was just like, what are we gonna do? Like, tell each other, I wish you pr- were different you know, on stage. <laughs> you know, like it was kind of, like we weren't professional enough to like take notes and like get better. Like we yeah. were just like guys that were trained in short form that wanted to say fuck and go longer. You know, like <laughs> it, it, it was, it, it, but and it was it just the notes thing was so it was it was yeah it was it was mean. Who who, who is the main yeah. note giver? Because there's normally one person that, that wants to be the person that wants to like settle it, some it, hash it, it totally varied there would be and there would be in the few short years where we were all together it, it, you know there were there were sort of rotating alliances like shifting it uh, like like wait like like somebody's got a beef with someone else and they're kind of expressing that through giving them more notes after the show like mm-hmm. like like you it's coming out on stage that this person thinks that that person's not funny, or this person thinks that that person is is selfish and mean on stage, or whatever. And it's like mm-hmm. kind of it's getting expressed in different ways. It's like trying to hold a family together. I mean, yeah. it's like because it, 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 you, you, you're together in this supposedly high stakes thing. Mm-hmm. It's fu- I mean, I'm imagining and trying to imagine your situation because we were in Milwaukee and had mm-hmm. no chance of being. It, it, you know, like we, well, but we, the stakes were that high for us that they were, that was our thing and that was our family and that was our life. And so I can't well, imagine. You got to say, Bruce and Mark moved uh, from uh, Calgary to Toronto to to make it, which shows how dumb they are. <laughs> uh, 
And we, yeah, and we did. The thing is, we used to fight. Like even when we were, before we had t- when we were just doing our club shows, we used to fight so much that there'd be like rumors going all around town. Oh, there won't be a show this week. No, there's no way they could get on stage together after the things they said to each other. And, <laughs> wait, 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 and was that was that from very early on? Like, like oh like yeah, from from the get go, you guys were already at each other's throats. Oh yeah, and then but for us, it was like we would fight like dogs all the way up until the showtime. And then once we got on stage, we loved each other again. And like, and we would have a great time because the show, the show is the show. And yeah, that, that, and then, that, that's why you were there. Yeah, and then after the show, we did we you know usually, well by the end of the show we'd usually be drunk and uh, we'd just hang out all night and uh, have a and and have a great time. You know. So, it was, so it was the lead up that was. The yeah, problem. we're all. Yeah, we're great. Once we're performing, everyone's great, and everyone and actually, we everyone gives great notes. Once once we've decided what we're doing, everyone's really good. But oh. it's the it's the deciding what we're going to do is when we fight. Hmm. And uh, you so know. like people have ownership of bits and stuff. Like I think we should do the uh, uh, chicken uh, drive through, and so and then someone's yeah. like, I hate that sketch, but they don't want to say I hate that sketch. So they say maybe we've done chicken drive through too yeah. many times, and then it just no. Erupts. Kids in the hall, we just say I hate that sketch. Right. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was our version of diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, who, Bruce who, would claim who, that we never did that sketch. That would be his way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Mark had a gift that uh, if it was if it was four to one against Mark, Mark would consider that a draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's very Canadian to me because like the, there's a, it's a, Canadians get off too easy with the whole the, it, it stops at just the politeness thing. Yeah, it's like the politeness comes with extreme capacity for argumentation, like yeah. uh, like, like like argumentativeness, like 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 a, it seems like you know g- general statements are inherently well, the, problematic. The, the, but the, I feel the politeness like, uh, uh, belies uh, a lot of withholding. Like you're 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 suppressing a lot of shit that. that it's just easy, easy to say I'm sorry, but you me, mm-hmm. you really hate everything that's going on. Yeah, I don't again because we never suppressed anything. Uh, that would have been <laughs> that would have been sweet, a little repression, and uh, <laughs> would have been nice. Um, yeah, that's like I remember when I first started doing stuff with people that weren't the kids in the hall. I was really startled at how fragile everyone was. <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck's everyone crying? <laughs> So yeah, fun. yeah. That's interesting. In general, are you? Uh, what was your family like? Was it functional, dysfunctional? Uh, my, oh, my family was. Uh, well, all of our families were were horribly dysfunctional. Um, and yeah, my most of us had alcoholic dads. Uh, most of us came from broken homes that wouldn't quite break. Uh, which is the, you know parents that would just sort of perforated sort of homes that are just yeah. dangling. Yeah, and. Uh, I, mean, I think, I think uh, all of us had alcoholic dads except for McKinney. Uh, his dad was uh, a diplomat, which I guess is worse. Yeah. Uh, um, and so, uh, so did you have to, at some point in your life, did you, did, have, you ever, have you done therapy? Or you, how do you approach your uh, uh, self-care? I did, I did therapy when I was trying to, when I was trying to uh, find a way to end my first marriage. Uh, and it worked. What, like uh, couples therapy or yeah. just you going yeah, in? I, going well, I started out in couples therapy and then I sort of hung in there for a while. Yeah. Uh, I did that too, even though my couples therapist is, it was like she helped the couple that I was in get married and then we got divorced in like eight months. And yeah. then I, but I kept going to her and I like, like yeah. every once in a while I'll bring it up. I'm like, you know, of course you, you know, yeah. you're kind of a failure as a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you had one job. Yeah, but. well, I went to the couples therapy, and and uh, and we uh, and partway through the, <laughs> the therapy, my wife took off to can- back to Canada with my kids, and then so then I just kept going there for a while because uh, she kept telling me I was nicer than her, uh, <laughs> and then eventually she said, you know, you don't have to go anymore. And then when I got married again, and then my second wife and I were having problems, and we, I went to the same couples therapist. <laughs> And we split up. Uh, <laughs> so it's not very good. As a, as a but the current wife you're happy with and everything's going... Well, I'm back together with my second oh, wife. Oh, right, yeah. That's so right, now, yeah. Now things are yeah. groovy again, yeah. Yeah, my second wife is my third wife. Wow. Um, that's, that could be a like ten, a... After a 10-year gap. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a fun, like, latter-day Matt Damon movie. <laughs> you know. Second, third wife. Yeah. <laughs> She's uh, they're they're yeah, who'd they're, be the wife in that? Uh, uh, the uh, the born to lose. 
Like born identity? I don't know. I'm trying to oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you were trying to make up an actress's name. Yeah, born to lose. Born, born to lose. To lose. To lose. So, what do you use yeah. this roller derby? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Born to Lose. Yeah, born Shindiggers to lose. taking it in the yeah. Crotchzilla's got it up on the wall. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, uh, what is it? Is it? And so, and so have you been, is it? Because I just read an article about when to know when to stop going to therapy when you're done. Yeah. And I thought that was, a, I felt weird opening the article, but then I felt immediately great because the article and the professionals cited within it all immediately indicated. Um, this is going to make you feel weird having this mm-hmm. conversation with yourself or with your, like, like, and, and here's why, and here's whatever. Have you, I mean, what, what's well, your relationship been with therapy? Or your well, my, uh, the ther- it was really, literally one day I was at, uh, we were in the middle of a session and the therapist said, you know, you don't have to keep coming. Yeah. <laughs> Just, and I said, oh, I, well, I didn't want to offend you. <laughs> <laughs> But that was her saying yeah. that you like like you're good to go. You're like, good. Yeah, you don't need to be here. And yeah. w- did did you stop? Yeah, that really? was the last session. Yeah, uh, that's great. So yeah. she's she like, yeah, you nailed so, it. Yeah, so you don't need to. Yeah, be here. you broke. The that's tape. a little sad because I mean, if, but if you're a therapist, birth your salt, you do understand going into the job, which is something I wouldn't have known. I'm a little more cynical than that. I would think mm-hmm. that they're just like. They never even confront this idea, but yeah. they're actually like, if they want to be a good therapist, they're thinking. My job is to make it so this person never has to come see me yeah. again. And, and it's an actually... intimate, it's, like, it's kind of like a prostitute <laughs> uh, in that it's an intimate thing, you know, having these, and also uh, I found you're not supposed to kiss them on the mouth. Right. <laughs> and they're, they're called mental health workers now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, a prostitute uh, psychologist can blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. That's a, that was a nice. Uh, Gr- groan, 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 applause. <laughs> oh, I've got more. That was problem <laughs> They were like, hey. <laughs> Sad Fonzie. Hey. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the 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 signs are if you if you if you have internalized everything, so you kind of just hear your therapist's voice in your head a lot in situations where you're like, oh, this is what she would say about this. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if you're when you're going into your sessions, you're kind of like starting to make shit up, like yeah. like reasons to be there, <laughs> stuff yeah. to talk. Spencer, about. Have, you, have you ever gone to a therapist? Oh yeah. I oh, love yeah. how's, it. How's that going? I wish my therapist would be like, you know, you don't have to keep coming. <laughs> Spencer's, Spencer's seeing Jeremy Piven as a therapist. Oh, he, it's great. He uh, just wants him to get a haircut and uh, yeah. stop playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> do, you, do you currently go, Spencer? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go tomorrow. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. What's going on with that? Uh, I, Tell us something really intimate about your therapy. Um, <laughs> I was talking about how, oh, the, the most in- interesting, probably the most valuable thing my, my therapist have ever said happened at last session. He's like, you know, you seem to be alone a lot. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to tell people. <laughs> and it, uh, it was like, I was, this was probably the first time I, f- I got what felt like a genuine valuable insight from him because most of what he's, most of the time I go to therapy, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, no, I know that. And then I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, you know, and I'm like, that's a stupid observation. But like, this is the first time I was like, hey, that's the kind of thing a therapist would say when you give them money to talk about shit. <laughs> that, that you're alone a lot. Yeah. Well, just, yeah, was I don't it, know. Was, it, was there a follow-up to that? Like, no. Like, I was like, come on, dude, what the fuck? That's all? I've been here so many times. That's like the one grain of rice you give me. This is literally, yeah. he's as therapeutic as a bully. He's saying all the yeah. same things a bully says. He's telling you to cut your no hair bully that you don't have any friends. No bully told me I'm alone a lot. Yeah. I'd yeah, love to hear that. You don't have any friends. Cut your but, but, but hair. He no one he, says he, that. He, he only, I'd love to hear that. He only knows you when he's with you, so he, you're never <laughs> yeah. alone when you're with, like, he, he only knows you not being alone. You go into that asshole Jordan Peterson for therapy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been cleaning my room. Clean up your room. <laughs> Stand up straight. You know what lobsters do? Huh? You know what lobsters do? What do they do? When their friends are in a bucket, they have mm-hmm. di- dominance hierarchies. Uh-huh. This is wait, some JP wait, stuff. Right. Lobsters wow. have friends. <laughs> lobsters have friends in a bucket. Yep. Like yeah. they're, they're, you mean like a lobster pot? They're trapped. They're gonna get eaten. No, a lobster bucket. 
In a, yeah. Not a trap. It's not a pot. Is that his Plato's cave? <laughs> yeah, well, JP, JP has a lot of dominance hierarchy stuff. Yes, his lobsters he's like, it's all just a bucket. Like, who cares which lobster's more red? He's yeah. like, all, all beings have uh, sexism. Look at yeah. lobsters. Oh, okay. Perfect yeah, example. And, and apparently, he will claim that uh, the dominance hierarchies are a good thing because the best always rise to the top. In uh, lobsters. Yeah, because I don't know if you know this, but Donald Trump's the president. Yeah. yeah. So, Bad Jordan, insane. you might want to go back to Canada and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, it's JP, good stuff. JP, would you die for <laughs> me? As a no, as a Zazel, as a Claus. I just listened to Jesus Christ Superstar uh, while I was cleaning my uh, video lab. Uh, I met What's Ted Neely. Ted Healy. Ted Neely. Oh, Ted Neely. I was like, Jesus. you met Ted Healy. I met, yeah, why would I bring that up? <laughs> How old are you? Yeah. Um, What's your video lab? Who, who's Ted Neely? He was Jesus. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. He was Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ. Stop seeing your therapist. No. Yeah. My video lab is. Yeah, you should get a better therapist. Let me go therapist. to your video lab. Yeah. yeah, no, I know. I bought eight GoPros. Oh. Uh, four Sony hand cams and a uh, a video two, switcher. Uh, two cockle shells <laughs> <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. And I'm figuring out how to do like a live broadcast and I, uh, I, 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 I live broadcast my, my workouts on Instagram. Oh. And I was, I was pointing... With eight GoPros, you can do, it in, you can do that bullet time effect. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> 60 frames per second, baby. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I've been learning. I, 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 and I, Did I you mount to, the uh, thing inside the pool like we talked about? Uh, I, I, got, um, I got my waterproof house. Is, like yeah, yeah. is this like a, like a Chuck Berry story? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's more like a Danny Thomas story. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Where I, yeah I got waterproof cameras so that people can watch me practice my uh, flip turns. It's, uh, it's a little hobby. <laughs> you know, I'm enjoying it. Wow. Do you think that the, the filming of your uh, workouts helps you get in better shape? Is that a motivating factor for you? Yeah. yeah. I think it's kind of a double-edged sword because that's something I could get, I can both get consumed with and I could also get bored with it possibly. Like it, 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 but it, it's sort of like the alternative is I'm not going to just keep working out just because like oh got to it's like I, I i don't know i'm i'm playing a semi self aware game with like how my brain works by turning my workouts into a thing that has like a nerdy quotient to it but it's kind of a loaded non gun or an unloaded actual gun of uh <laughs> or a double edged gun sword um <laughs> that shoots little hilt bullets um that <laughs> themselves have no edge but have are explosive um <laughs> Uh, in that, like, yeah, I, I'm, historically, I will challenge myself with things that I'm bad at, and then I'll, like, learn the fuck out of them and, and for the dopamine spike of, like, conquering this thing, and then I'll just get aggressively bored and, and, and just walk away. I, 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 just, I just opened up, like, Logic Pro today, and I was like, mm -hmm. I had forgotten every single thing that I learned about how to make a little song. Like, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember all the hot keys. It's like, mm -hmm. why did I spend all that time learning? Have you got the dive mm -hmm. good yet? Because you, you were doing the floppy legs thing. Have, have you got the dive ripped? Like, like, are, I like are to you... think I'm keeping my legs a little straighter. My, oh, I, had, yeah. I had some floppy legs on my dives. Well, I guess Ooh. so, yeah. You know what I started doing, Dave, uh, is uh, I took off my nose clip. Uh, oh, well, during that's the big. last workout. And that's, on that's, the flips, that's then big do you boy get stuff. water up? Do you have to breathe out? You can't do the flips, the flips yet. That's no. like wasabi in the nose yeah. when yeah. I flip. Because you got to breathe out, I guess, or something. Yeah, you yeah. got to get to the end. Of, like so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you yeah. exhale when you're going yeah. upside down. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should try that. Yeah. that There's no be air good. in my lungs, yeah. brother. And, I've uh, just swam a whole pool length. I'm like, and uh, coach, coach also wants you to work on those floppy legs. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Mm. Were you ever in a comedy troupe, Spencer? Oh, yeah. I was on this podcast <laughs> called Harmontown. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I guess they've I, heard I, of it. I heard it, uh, I heard it died after 17 years. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fighting, a lot of notes. <laughs> yeah, well, what people don't know is after every Harmontown, we go back into the green room and really yeah. fucking get into it. We about about the, 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 yeah. the minutia Shape of, of show. Every joke <laughs> is under a microscope. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's all punch up though. It's good. Right. It makes it better. Uh, yeah, like look how good so, the so show is. How, how many shows do we have left? Like, how, how, what's, what's the what's the shot clock on right now? What's today? Seven. It's Monday. It's, mm? We got maybe eight eight shows left. All right, I eight? can only do eight of them. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's that's all I that's all did, I made you ever, did, did you ever play any D and D, Dave? I've never played D and D. You want to try and be a little like uh, like a like a like a guest character in a little in little, D, little role D&D. playing? Sure, because you know, because D and D and video games both kind of broke when I was a kid. At just after I started having sex, right. That's a and bad thing. There timing. was just no turning back yeah. from there. Right. Do, do you think there was a correlation there? That, that, I think that, so, yeah. That, that you created D&D and video games by well, fucking I people? Just, I just, <laughs> other people would say, hey, have you heard about this D&D? I said, I'd love to hear about it, but I'm fucking right now. <laughs> um, well, what about some video games? Same deal. I got some right. fucking to do. <laughs> Right. When I'm done, maybe we can talk about it. So what what what, what year are we talking? Like early eighties? This is early this is late seventies, I late, guess. Oh, early late 70s. 70, well, I guess eight no, I lost my virginity in nineteen eighty, I guess. Because what, yeah. what, what So what, you were hitting that early hip hop pussy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that Sugar Hill gang. <laughs> Rapping yep. about peas yeah, and carrots. Mean, yeah, look yes. at me. He was, uh, yeah, he, he was fucking to Melly Mel. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. See, nobody laughs fucking, because that's I was too fucking, fucking deep a track. Yeah, I was fucking or to Pink young. Floyd's "The Wall," <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which is yes. really quite. A, if you can stay erect during <laughs> during anything by Roger Waters, I mean, if your if your lover uh, can can stay in a relationship with a guy who's who's playing Pink Floyd, because it's all his songs are about his mommy letting him down after his daddy died. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Has anybody <laughs> achieved orgasm during Pink Floyd, or is that uh, only only Roger, only Roger Waters? Only Roger Waters. Only Roger Waters. <laughs> Did I talk about this in the last show? Because I had written this down as a note, but it's, I, I, I'm usually blackout drunk by the middle of the show. But like, did I did I mention the thing? I was li- li- like, like, did you think Pink Floyd had a manager? And like, so many Pink Floyd songs like have a cigar, but like, there's such a theme in Pink Floyd songs <laughs> where they go meta and talk about how shitty the record business is and showbiz yeah. and all this stuff. Do you think they had like a really nice manager who's yeah. like, guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I, I thought we got along, yes, and they're like, yeah. "No, it's a character, it's a thing." Yeah. Like, well, you're perpetuating a stereotype about my my <laughs> vocation. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. like, I, I, are I, you not happy with the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> Do you what think am I that I'm doing? only interested in money? I uh, care about you. <laughs> I like that the job pays. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty transparent about it. I yeah. hear this latest single, and I'm like, "Is that an impression of me?" Right. <laughs> yeah. You wanted to do a concert in Pompeii. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I finished my pudding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why am I one of these characters coming out and yeah. putting your soul on trial with your mom and your English professor? That's crazy. Come yeah. on. I never shot you up with heroin. <laughs> Turned you into a Nazi with shaved eyebrows. I didn't do that. <laughs> They went well. Just yeah. Pink Floyd references. Oh, I mean, references, yeah. I yeah. It's, it's I, I only know I, I don't know a whole lot of Pink Floyd. I gotta, yeah, I gotta, be, gotta be honest. I'm pretty proud that by 1981 I realized that the wall was shit. I think I would, that was pretty fast. I think the, that was pretty fast off the mark. I would never go that far. I'm, yeah. I'm afraid to, I probably will never reach that uh, apotheosis. <laughs> I'm 46 and I. I'll, oh, I, that's I'm a terrible like, album. <laughs> well, wow. if you take out all the Roger Water songs, it's not bad. <laughs> oh, come on! Wow! All right. Canadian shots fired. I'm telling you, I love it. I never. I'll. I. I never like. Uh, I. I won't bother to like. Because I feel like my taste in music is so unqualified and bad that I. I'm afraid of the glass house of like ever saying like I. It's like it, 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 like I'll be like this Katy Perry song is fine. Like I'm, I'm afraid if I step on the slightest footstool of snobbery, like I'll f- immediately do a oh, triple wor- flip oh, and break my neck because people will be like, what do you listen to? And I'll be like, nah, 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 don't look at those underwear. <laughs> like, I don't know. Br- like, Br- Brian Posehn came up to me and said, hey, I heard you have a bit where you can talk anybody out of their love of Rush. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I fucking love Rush. I go, I can't talk Brian Posehn out of loving Rush. I could talk anybody else out of loving Rush <laughs> because Brian Posehn loves his Rush, but yeah. wow. I'll set you up with Alex Lifeson sometime. 
Was who? <laughs> the guitar player from Rush. Oh, really? <laughs> See, I, 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 I hate you for even knowing that. <laughs> I remember being in the car with you and Jack Black, and then like some Led Zeppelin came up, and you're like, Led Zeppelin sucks, and you, you, you talk for like two minutes, and then, and then Jack Black was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so unmistakable. You're, you're, you're just like, all right. Well, that's fine. You know, it's yeah, right. well, yeah, but like, because it's I, like, I, there, there's, there's like gonna... I, I, I have, I have no leg to stand on. Like, I have no credentials because I know and like sticks more than. The, than the Pink Floyd, and th- they're a worse band. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the yeah, things you like. They are, they are a worse band, no matter what the other band you're talking about is. It is. <laughs> well, if Styx and Pink Floyd are bad, then what's good? <laughs> right. Katy Perry? I, 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 I got to go see Styx. Uh, with I Deep... saw Styx live. Yeah, uh, oh, are, are they Canadian? No. No, no. no. I saw them on the Crystal Ball Where, where, where are Styx from? Are they... what, what's America. America. They're yours. Uh, I, I, I got Rush invited by Diva Zappa to go see them at, uh, at the Greek, and they opened for Yes, who I truly hate. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're the worst of prog rock. Like, like I, yeah. I, w- I would rather suck Getty Lee's balls than go to a Yes concert. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were backstage, and I asked uh, Tommy, what's his name? Tommy Shaw, uh, who took over from the other guy that used to be the lead singer. And I go... Yes is on, like, you don't, you don't want to go watch him? And he goes, no, nah, I've seen him. <laughs> yeah. F- yeah, fuck yes. Mm-mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't fuck, have antipathy to no. trying to think of, like, a band that I, like, What's hate. that song that, like, like, doop, 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 no, no, that's, that's six. What's no. the fucking one? <laughs> Round, roundabout. <laughs> okay. They, roundabout they both is, they both roundabout is a yeah. yes song. What's I only feel one? that way about, like, 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 I was renegade. Like, there's bands was, yeah, and singers sticks. that I recognize are good because, again, I have no confidence in my own taste, but I hate them the way I hate Apocalypse Now and stuff like that, where I, like, I resent the idea that I'm not allowed to, to not be in love with them. Like, Elvis Costello, I have... Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't... Hold on. I don't hate Elvis <laughs> Costello, but I, I hate the phenomenon of yeah, not being allowed to hate I Elvis like Costello. Like a, I like a couple of Elvis Costello songs. I know, David, well, you, you, you love Elvis but Costello. But here's where the Elvis Costello, I heard quote saying that, called Led Zeppelin, uh, I believe he called them egregious charlatans. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I, I just like, he he pushes through his nose too much. It's so nasal. Like I like 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 yeah. wing, 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 wing. it's so fucking nasal. I can't. Well, like, I guess like, goodbye Bob Dylan too. I fu- I fu- <laughs> yeah. I fucking hate Bob Dylan. <laughs> Bob Dylan is a fucking fraud and a fucking plagiarist. To fuck oh, Bob shit. Dylan. Oh yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. Damn it. I mean, who give me you? sticks any day. Yeah. Sticks first concert I ever, I ever bought a joint at was at Sticks. Huh? I first time I ever bought drugs at a concert was at Sticks when I was like hey, 16. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. What kind of drugs was it? I bought weed. I yeah. bought some, I bought some rolled joints. Classic. <laughs> from a dude behind me. Said, hey, dude, you got some extra joints you can sell? Was that dude a robot? And did you say domo arigato to him? <laughs> Sticks doesn't yes. sing that in concert anymore because they're ashamed of that song. Well, they, they actually well, don't. Fuck them. They don't yeah. do fucking roboto. Fuck Sticks. Yeah. What's Japanese That's they're for, afraid of for no thank you? Uh, <laughs> no domo arigato. No, no mo arigato. No yeah. mo. No, that's good. That's I did, yeah, see, here's the thing. Like, I don't like like the Tao Te Ching says when you if 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 some things become beautiful, other things become ugly. But like like when you're talking about music, like if so if there's such a thing as a shitty band and oh this music sucks, then like I, I so I like Phil Collins, but I recognize probably along with Phil Collins that like you know eighty five percent of his stuff is like styrofoam. And uh, and who knows about the last fifteen percent? But like that, he's he's prolific. He just like he and and he wouldn't he wouldn't be able to be if he listened to these these thoughts that you're giving voice to when you talk about music. I was just in like, Vegas yeah. and we drove by Ellis Island. I mean, we must have talked about it in the show. But Dan sang Susu Studio and took his <laughs> shirt off during the song. Uh, security came in. Then Las Vegas PD came in. And we had to. Yeah, it was make, a whole thing. Dan had uh-huh. to change his clothes like uh, like Sylvester Stallone and uh, and Victory, where we had to sneak him out of the fucking uh, arena. Yeah. And which aren't you allowed to do? Take your shirt off or sing Susu Studio? <laughs> <laughs> 
the shirt off, which I was uh, 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 so surprised by until I really thought about it. Because you're being goaded like, on by the woman that ran the bar, like the bartender. She was like, like, like hyping you up, kind of, right? Did she work there? There was a, there was an older. She, <laughs> There was an older woman. She well, had a no, there, cigarette there, dangling from her mouth. There were two racist women. There was a, there was a mother and daughter team, who were virulently racist. Who were talking shit about this very handsome black guy who was wearing a nice suit, and they were saying awful, awful racist stuff. But clearly, the mother wanted to fuck the the black guy. And then some college kids came in and sat on the front table, and it was me, you, Nick Vinay, Sam Simon of, of Simpsons fame. Um, Schraub was there, a couple of the people, and then Dan got up and started singing Sue Studio. And he was being kind of peppered on by, I think, either the bartender or the karaoke. Uh, it was a fairly empty place, and then there was mm -hmm. like one uh, kind of senior woman who had this kind of charisma to her because she was like into, into it. And so she, was, she came up to the foot of the stage and was like kind of dancing to me doing Susudio and she was encouraging me and I was playing to her and then she said like take it off or something like and that. And so Dan started kind of sexy slowly like... So being a long form improviser... Yeah. Started taking his shirt off and now the you crowd has gone... Block. The, yeah. the crowd has gone potty. They're, 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 now it's fucking hype. Then the security guard comes in and, and, and he goes, sure he goes hey, you point. can't, you can't... You, you, yeah, well, I was taking my pants off as well. Yeah, so well there. Like, but D Dan got completely hey, shirtless, yeah. and now the eight college kids, the two racist ladies, the black guy, everybody was freaking out. And it was really good. And then two security guards come in wearing yellow shirts, and they had like mace. I feel like, and the hand was over the mace. Uh, on like, a taser. <laughs> like, yeah, they came out, not weapons drawn, but weapons at the ready. And here was my mistake, and I know I've told this story in the podcast before, but he said, well, might as well finish it. Here was my mistake, Dave mm -hmm. Foley. All right. The, the security came in, and as soon as they said, like, you can't do that, you can't take our clothes off in here, and, and I was like, as soon as they said that, I was like mortified, I was like, oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't, I, I started putting my clothes back on, and then I, I misguided, like, I thought I would do a bit that th in this mistaken world where I live in where everyone shares my entire vocabulary of references, <laughs> I thought I would do an impression of Bono in the U2 video where they're getting shut down by the police on the rooftop. And, as a, and that I, I thought the security guards would have a laugh and everyone would laugh because I was like, it looks like they're trying to shut us down. <laughs> But oh, shit. I no one got the reference. Uh, uh, that, they but, thought I was being completely but, sincere. But, but that was the tipping point. That they, uh, went they were on. like, let them let dance. Just let them dance. <laughs> and, and, and in, in this <laughs> Christmas tree of bad decision making, the, inst the security guards <laughs> take that to heart and start engaging with the hecklers and oh, yeah. going like, hey, I don't tell you how to do your job. And then the people are like, <laughs> but, but the what woman, job, you fucking pig? But the woman... <laughs> The, the, the elderly racist woman that was trying to fuck the black guy, even though she kept dropping like horrible like epithets at him when, whenever he walked away, she spit on one of the security guards, and that's when things went <laughs> fucking that's haywire. Going, that's oh. it, and they start clearing out no, the entire fucking bar. Six L, uh, LVPD, like like proper policemen, came p barging in, and now th these people have guns. Mm -hmm. And and the, and the eight, while all this is happening, yeah. I'm on the karaoke stage, yeah. which is ironically now in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and a and a, and a like an incredibly impressively like strategic Rob Schraub in this like shining moment, like he I just feel this hand grab my wrist, and he just goes like, "Come on," and, and, wait, wait, wait. and he just p pulled me over to the giant booth, and and they and took Schraub's hat and jacket, and changing put it on clothes, me. like. <laughs> If, if you've ever seen the movie Victory with, with uh, Michael Caine and, uh, and Sylvester Stallone and, and Pele, uh, they, they <laughs> changed clothes. And Rob put his beanie on. on the, or like, like, we have to get you out of here, but you can't be wearing the same clothes that you were wearing. <laughs> and Sam Simon was there. And now the, the college kids, the, the woman spit on a police, uh, on a security officer. Then the police came. Mm -hmm. Now the, the kids were like, hey, let them sing. And, and, and they came to your rescue. These like like fratty kind of sorority. everybody was yeah. It was a, and so a now we're hiding in the war. background. And now there's a a melee. Like a, like mm -hmm. it, 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 shit went wild. And we sneaked out the back. And now we walk out and there's loads of cop cars outside. 
And we're slithering down the side of the building at Ellis Island. People were being cuffed on hoods, yes. like because yeah. they had cleared the bar out. Everyone's like, "What could I just have a fucking good time? Why is that against the law?" <laughs> Everyone had completely forgotten. And, and, and the woman that spit on the cop is like, "You can't kick me out of here." Like, oh, no, no, no. The, the daughter goes, "You can't throw her out. She's my mother." And he goes, "You're out of here too." And then the fucking fratties got in there, and the sororities got in there, and it, then it was fucking chaos. And we used that distraction to get out of there. And the, and the black guy in the suit's like, I thought I was already paying the price for this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so we're leaving Ellis Island, which is a terrible, terrible casino. Uh, but they have karaoke <laughs> every night. And th- th- be like El- th- 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 there's like an Asian Elvis and a black Elvis and a fat Elvis in a wheelchair. And, and, but, they, but they don't even know Elvis songs. They just know how to dress up like Elvis. They don't even know karaoke. Elvis was a guy. They right. just think that that's how you dress when you're successful in Las and Vegas. <laughs> so we're leaving, and Sam Simon, our, our dearly departed friend, who you know, like fam- awesomely made Simpsons a thing. Uh, we're, we're leaving, and there's police everywhere, and there's the, the, the college kids are being thrown over the hood and being cuffed. Like we're staying here at the Best Western or whatever the fucking shit hotel is there, and they're like, "No, you're going to jail." And Sam Simon goes, "Yeah, but." What about the guy that took his shirt off <laughs> during, during Phil Collins? Shouldn't, shouldn't we be looking for him? <laughs> and we had to walk like a half a mile to go to the fucking, like, like some other hotel. It used to be the Maxim, now it's like the Western Suites. We had to walk a mile to go get a cab because we couldn't get one there. And it was, uh, yeah, it's good, it's good karaoke. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the third time in eight years, like we like told probably the story, told the story the and the, into the record. But like uh, you know, I, saw, I always wondered how the uh, Vegas riot started. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what of, of all songs to start some inflammatory, <laughs> awful shit? Sue Studio is the most anodyne, like fucking nonsense. <laughs> but uh, the, the reason why that all kicked off is because you were nailing it. <laughs> you were so good at it that people were encouraging you to be nude. Mm-hmm. Well, one person. <laughs> <laughs> Said take it, it off. So I, good. Yeah. When I was like 35, whatever I was, it was funnier to me in my underwear. It was funnier. <laughs> now, now I think it's like a little creepy probably. Yeah. I took my clothes off at the Traverse City Comedy Festival and uh, nothing happened. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there was no incident. No, was no, fine. no. People just get uh, people just had a good time. <laughs> Fully, full naked. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Cock out. Yeah. <laughs> so you, was, did you uh, cover it, it? Did you like cup your hands over? No, it? no, no. That was the whole point. <laughs> so Are there you... was some someone in the audience shouted, "Take it off!" and everyone started cheering. I went, "All right, fuck it." Uh, this, I was still drinking in those days. What's uh, it like down there? Huh? My, what's, my, what's, my, what's the deal? Uh, be, be honest. In your descri- objective appraisal. D- 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 be, be, be graphic and honest about your genitals. Because I've heard that your penis is shaped exactly like an ampersand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think uh, the best way. Uh, I'm, I'm fluctuating between adorable... <laughs> And beneficent. <laughs> that's yeah. a gr- that's the sweet spot. Yeah, my yeah. penis looks like a third nipple mm. perched on top of two pendulous tumors. Because Dan has uh. David, you don't know this. Dan has enormous balls. You have you you enormous have enormous balls. You have uh, conspicuous balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or they may look enormous because, as Ryan Ridley has said, saying, it's like saying, a bus parked next to the Epcot I'm Center. I'm not saying yeah. even by. <laughs> I think, yeah. I'm not saying by contrast. I'm saying you have a small dick, but your balls are n- needlessly large. There's no. There's. There, there's no. I know. It's like, yeah. what's the deal? Like, what's 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 what? It's, what are you it, gonna do with them? Exactly. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I uh, like, like we we discussed with Heather Ann Campbell. Like, I've never dropped what I would call a load. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll emit a desperate dime-sized like. Uh, but, but your you balls know. are like the size. Yeah. Of like, if, if you bifurcated a cantaloupe and made two balls out of it. You have like it looks like a cantaloupe but with a, a cleft. You have giant 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 yeah. testicle. Oh. Yeah. Uh pic- picture Garfield the cat. 
his eyes. <laughs> and then a little dick in between them. Like Garfield's nose, but yeah, on yeah, top. No, no, if Garfield's <laughs> nose was on top of his eyes. <laughs> Or if Garfield's just upside down. Just, uh, just picture two big balls and a little dick. I, you, you, <laughs> you could probably do that. You, 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 would, you would think, though, that you would have dropped larger loads. With yeah, those, you know, you'd think I would well, come yeah. like buckets and be like, that's, uh, that's how you make up for it, right? Uh, my auto from but the like, Simpsons. That, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, so whose response would that be? <laughs> like, oh, his dick was little, but oh, so much cum. Well, ost- uh, ostensibly. So much. Oh, I guess God, uh, like whatever, like, whatever maniac is behind all these decisions, yeah. you know, it's just like, it's just yeah. like, well, I want to find out, you know, like, ladies, what, how do you know you're going to play with these attributes? Like, la- ladies love a good drenching. <laughs> <laughs> from a little dick <laughs> troll. Hey. There's certainly yeah, have, there's yeah. certainly a market for tiny dick and too much cum. Yeah. I think I have I have I have a penis that I that usually gets this response. Oh, so much better than I was expecting. Oh, ah. like, oh I thought I was gonna have to be polite. Because you don't expect much from me. Because you're uh, because you're you're beneficent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're, li- you're you're like you're like a pope. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm so not sexy in general. Yeah, that it's that's an. It's a I have been telling surprise. women will go like if they've if they've if they've if they've heard my uh, rhetoric uh, leading to uh, the uh, their uh, uh, maiden voyage there's no in for- the <laughs> boudoir. There's, there, yeah. there, there's no foreplay like rhetoricians. Uh, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, I, I I was actually anticipating like a micro penis situation, like mm-hmm. clinically, like like yeah. like small. And shout out to my micro penis uh, listeners, like I. Uh, you know, I yeah. I, I I find it, uh, uh, yeah. it uh, you know yeah. in, like like I don't I don't I mean look I don't like I don't like dick size. You know what? Let's being every- bandied about yeah. as a metric. How about uh, this? Everyone here with a micro penis, stand up, get a round of applause. <laughs> You're good people, micro penises. O- only woman stood up. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. uh, like, finally it. my giant clitoris can can be <laughs> contextualized in a. <laughs> uh, well, we've gone too far, haven't we? Have we? It's that it's that time. I of the, mean, the, the, show. the thing is now we like now that like we're ticking down to the f- to the dying days of of Harmontown. Yeah, we're gonna and, have some. Uh, we're like, in, so I, we're, I, in, let, we're let, Let's not leave anything. we like, any stone unturned. Right in, this yeah. is like the death rattle. Yeah, in, it is. The, 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 I'm, I'm glad you came here for the death rattle, yeah. Dave Foley. Uh, that's uh, I basically that's my career. Dave so. Foley, can I? One of my favorite things about you because Dave Foley loves coffee. And mm-hmm. are, are you currently drinking coffee? I was. This was this was full of coffee when I came out here. This is the only time I've seen you without coffee. Yeah, this is why I ran out, and uh, uh, I didn't plan what ahead. Was the, what was the thing when you were on um, news radio? Oh, and and, uh, and you got in the Enquirer. The national, you know, my only time in the National Enquirer. Yeah. And, uh, what was the headline? It said Dave Foley admits to drinking fifty cups of coffee a day, <laughs> which I wouldn't consider a huge admission, uh, but my, it was true. My favorite is that also Dave has uh, trouble sleeping. Yeah. I don't and, know. <laughs> And Greg Proops on the road is like, you, you know that if you drink less coffee, you're like, you're like, hey, if I wanted to hear this shit, I could get this at home. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the, the, is there a correlation, or were you already insomniac before you drank uh, coffee? I, no, I w- I've been an insomniac since I was about like four years old. So pre-coffee, you were insomniac. Yeah, I was a worried four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> what was, your, you, main, what you, was you, your main worry at four, at four years old? Uh, global warming. Um... <laughs> Uh, ahead of your time. I was really ahead of yeah. Do you have like nightmares when you do sleep? Like what, what insomnia yeah. I feel like people no. misunderstand it cuz to me it sounds like a superpower. <laughs> like yeah. I hate falling asleep. I'm like god damn it I was just yeah. getting into this. I have trouble sleeping at night. I can sleep in the day easily. I love sleeping in the day. Uh, I just have trouble sleeping at night. Yeah, on on the van of the tour bus you you can sack right out. Yeah, I'm good at napping. You're a good napper. Yeah, but at night I sort of stay up and just. If you hmm. get some Rachel Maddow and some headphones, you're good to go. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's my. That's my. That's my. Uh, MSNBC and a cup nap- of coffee. Did, did they full is <laughs> ready to go. Because it's comforting. Because I know that I can fall asleep during one show, and then the next show will say the exact same thing. Right. There's so I game. don't have to worry about missing anything. <laughs> yeah. I'll just, you know. I'll get Chris Hayes' take, and then I'll, I'll wake up to Meadows. Wait, is that the shouty guy? Who's the shouty guy? Oh, that's uh, Chris Matthews. He's, yeah, he's he's a little crazy. I, I can't. He's too yeah. yelly. Is it is fifty cups an exaggeration? No, nope. but is that now not true, or do you? Are you it's still not true 50? now. I probably like I like today. I've probably had 
10 espressos? That seems mathematically, 50 cups seems mathematically impossible, but I guess but probably you, not you if you get up because and you start I would, get a, I, would get, I would have a 10 cup pot of coffee uh, at home before going to work. So that's 10 right there, and then through the day... Uh, the, pro- the prop lady is, I forget their names, because they... Yes, yeah, Jody Mann, was yeah. our pro- and she would, uh, she would... They kept two thermoses of coffee on their prop wagon uh, so that I would stop going to get coffee. Right. Uh, <laughs> and they would just pour... And they're the ones who told me, they said, you've had 50 cups today. Uh, so they were, that's how I found out. Is, I, that, is that post-drinking? Or well, was that was that... during drinking. Yeah, you mean? I mean, was it like while? I, you mean well, after I mean, a like, night of like drinking? Some, some people go, get sober and then they they their it's coffee's there for them. Oh no, I didn't get sober till like five. Oh, it'll be five years ago, Christmas. So coffee was always a thing, and that was coffee. just like yeah. A fun, and, well, and, I, I knew it was great. It would be coffee up until like ten o'clock, and then and then uh, Jody would start bringing me whiskey. So oh yeah, yeah. oh because oh, uh, they had when I did uh, the show with John Larroquette, they had a little uh, in, in the prop fridge. Uh, there was a secret pitcher, and they would go, like, we're going to tell a couple people about this, and they had a, a cocktail of the week. And so there'd be, like, Cosmopolitans in a pitcher, and they would just give you a little styrofoam cup, and that was your secret cocktail. Mm-hmm. But that was the same people. But uh, you, you, you just said one day, fuck it, and you didn't go through programs. You just said, I quit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just stopped. Just cold turkey did. Uh, yep. Uh, well, I had, uh, the, I had the advantage of, of, of uh, massive brain trauma. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You broke yeah. your fucking... I broke my brain. Uh, yeah. What I happened? Fell, you fell on the ground? I fell and... down at the, the must downtown, which is around the corner from where I lived. And you were found like just... Like, you I were just, just laying... No, I, just pa- I passed out, fell on the patio and cracked oh. my head. Oof. And I hit, I hit the patio so hard that my brain gave me a black eye from inside my skull. Wow! Oh! Uh, and then I... <laughs> then, and then I woke up in woke up in the ICU with my uh, with my ex wife and my daughter standing there, and we were going to go to New York uh, after Christmas. And um, it was one of these where I went, "Hey, I think I'm going to quit drinking." Oh. <laughs> and uh, was know. there? You said, "Yeah, it's like okay, there's rock bottom, and there's like like there's the is there a, is there a positive like kind of like." Um, like when you're when you're struggling to uh, overcome it, is there like a kind of uh, what's the question I'm trying to ask? Like um, like a, a a realization you had that like that kind of makes you strong as as opposed to uh, I don't no I don't know. Like, I, oh, I think it was more just of that oh this is fucked up and I, I think I, I'll, I'll quit drinking. But I, at the time I didn't I thought oh I might not really do it because uh, I thought this might might be hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but the brain injury seemed to actually <laughs> cure me of alcoholism. Oh, you might have you might be one of these privileged people that yeah. fell down while drunk and injured the part of their brain that the, loves drinking. Yeah, and I actually, <laughs> it, that's what happened. And uh, and also like my uh, like my depression went away too. What? Wow. Yeah, I've been depressed. I've been dealing with depression so most of like my life. You're like alfalfa from the yeah. uh, no. our, our, our mean, gang. Yeah. A lot of people become serial killers. Well, yeah. <laughs> or or they suddenly can speak French. That's something. <laughs> People have had head injuries and then they can play the piano. Sometimes uh, they turn invisible. Yeah. I mean, that's Killigan's Island, yeah. but. Yeah. Oh, that would have been cool. Oh, man. You got to hit just the right spot. Yeah. It's not worth trying. I'm going to try it again. <laughs> no, it's, t- it's t- the, the, the part of your brain that makes you invisible or keeps you from being invisible, yeah. uh, it's, in... it's nestled right within the part oh. that keeps your heart going. Sometimes <laughs> I think, sometimes I think I, I'd like to just like uh, hit it again with like a brick or something just so I can start drinking again. Just have a Manhattan yeah. and like. Yeah. Uh, just the. But well, because yeah. now you know if you get too drunk and get this fail safe. Yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I, there, there was something that uh, my therapist told me about uh, drinking that to me was if I ever should choose to stop, uh, like this would be in the forefront of my brain, which is that uh, when you're 12, which is when I'm going to make a guess, the guys like you and me uh, maybe had our first experiences with drinking with, with this 12, elixir yeah. and uh, it's like oh my god there's this amazing experience and then your friends are like yeah that was kind of fun but now my head hurts and you're like i'm peter pan and like <laughs> it, when you're 15 17 19 25 like your uh your neurology keeps like growing like tree roots around this thing and mm-hmm. um it very well at a certain point it can not only 
start to lose its actual benefits, its medicinal benefits. Mm -hmm. But it actually, I mean, it can lose them entirely. It can become just a plain old poison. And yet the tree roots of your brain have kind of like organized themselves in a relationship around mm -hmm. the space occupied by this thing, which stops giving you the same kind of, you know, after a while, it's like, well, I'm 46. When I get shit-faced drunk, I am no longer the hilarious person I was, perhaps. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I might get more depressed. I might get more uh, blackout. I might, mm -hmm. might, I might lose my memory more. It might, it might become, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing. And I think that part of it, when somebody talks about quitting drinking, like for me, the part of my brain that, that resists it is, is like, yeah, but drinking's always, you know, like I don't want to make that big change. <laughs> like I, I was like, like you, but it's, yeah. I think it's, that, that's why it's interesting. I thought for my therapist to point out like, yeah, but the change has already happened. Like you're already quitting drinking. You already quit that relationship with that wonderful potion mm. that made you happy. Yeah. It, it, that relationship is long since over and and you're dancing with this the coffin of this ex-girlfriend that no longer has left you a long time ago. I she didn't put it that way. I'm very articulate cuz yeah. I'm drunk. I was going to say a therapist is really poetic. Uh, dancing yeah. I like with the, the coffin. coffin. No, she watches family of your ex-girlfriend. Ex I had she yeah. probably said, "You know, it's like Stewie when he did the thing in the I and <laughs> yeah, uh, my well, eyes I always over. like the thing was I I think when you're a drunk it, it becomes a big part of how you define yourself too. Right. Like as you when you're a drinker like for me it was you know being being a drinker and being a hard drinker was a big part of how I like how I you know what I envision myself to be. And along the way, and I'll say this not to, not to enable anybody listening or anything, but, but it it's is like, great. But it's uh, to, but to, to but to acknowledge part of the reason why we can get we can get stuck in our ways is because whether it's smoking, video games, drinking, or anything. Is it what happens is it brings out behaviors and attitudes in the people around you. So it's not mm. only defining you, it's defining how you relate to well, other people. Yeah. Well, that's like, because there was one other time I woke up in a hospital after, after drinking. Uh, but that time I didn't quit drinking. In fact, I woke up and I had an IV in my arm. And I, and, uh, but I sort of took that out and said, where the hell am I? And was walking out and, and uh, the doctor, as I was walking out, just said, you know, you really have to quit drinking. And I just announced, first, everyone else has to get a lot more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that sounds very familiar to me. Yeah. But apparently that happened because now you don't drink anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always said I drink to make you all of you smarter or something, yeah. Like, yeah. something <laughs> hilarious like that. It was like, I, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it was, it, 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 but it's like, it, it, I, I, there's the self-deluded part of that, yeah. but then there's also the kind of like as a as a former smoker of cigarettes, I it's it, it's too easy to just say, oh, I was doing this terrible thing by smoking, and it, uh, it, it, and then I stopped, and it was a zero sum game. It's like while I was a smoker, there were many positive things to say about it, and they were all socially based mm -hmm. because the kinds of people who would get on your ass about how you were a smoker, yeah. the, <laughs> that was a red flag for the kind of relationship you that didn't I didn't bother around, to yeah. engage in. And it's like yeah. like like I don't think I was denying myself the friendship of people yeah. that would have made my life better. Yeah. Well, because, I, it will, yeah. I think it will, every friendship and relationship I had uh, started drunk. Right. Like every woman I was ever with, I, I you know, you know, we, it started out drinking, and every friendship I think started out drinking after the age of about you know fourteen. So and so it was very beneficial for yeah. a long, long time. What's well, the world's oldest yeah. medicine? I mean, it yeah. really was a medicine. And it made me, you know, and I always said, like, I don't like, because, like, weed always makes me feel like I'm, I'm ugly and stupid. <laughs> and, and then you haven't paid your taxes so that you're going to have a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, and drinking always made me feel like I was, I was beautiful and smart, you know? Yeah. You know, I always felt very beautiful. It made your penis beneficent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Beatific, even. Be beatific. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the beatitudes of your yeah. balls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a there's a there's yeah. a there's a sweet lofty zone in there and you're always I think you're always kind of chasing that yeah. spot and it gets it continues to shrink and become less and less reliable and it's like oh this euphoria this medicinal mm -hmm. quality and and uh you know as of late what I've noticed is that it's like it's it's becoming more and more uh calculatably uh predictable that like um 
uh, that I'll use superfluous adverbs, um, <laughs> <laughs> calculatably predictable. Um, just say, uh, like a normal mm-hmm. person if you don't know what you're going to say next. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that, that, that I will, <laughs> that my mood will just take a crash, which yeah. it's, 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 it, 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 it feels, it feels like something I can observe because of therapy, because I yeah. have a, because my therapist, among the many things that I like about her, she, she never forced that hand. She, she, I think she probably mm. senses in me that there's this like, uh, you know, a, a, a tough like beast to like get around and that she would just join many skulls on Golgotha if she were to try <laughs> to, 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 to engage me about my drinking. And so she just, she makes sure I know that she's not here to make me quit. And that, that way, for that reason, because I can trust her, mm-hmm. I've had more conversations with, about drinking and my relationship with it than I've ever had yeah. with my, in my life with a qualified professional who knows mm-hmm. all about it. And, um, and uh, uh, it, it, I forgot the rest of what I was going to say. <laughs> but uh, Spencer, you, you don't drink I, really, but I, didn't you also quit weed, or are you just kind of like rat, ratchet that back? I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't like buy. I don't like really buy weed or anything. But I, I, I I'll smoke with it coke. with other people yeah. or whatever. You don't have to. Yeah. Tom Jones doesn't buy panties, <laughs> and he's wearing them everywhere. <laughs> were, you, were you ever weedy? Like I, like 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 Dave? Were, were you ever like? A weed? I would only smoke weed when I was blind drunk. Really? Uh, and yeah, because otherwise it would just make me really paranoid. Does it bother you when, when we're on the road together? Because the, the 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 rest of the cast of Who's Live we're always drinking. Like is that does, that does, no. that doesn't matter? matter no, no. I, I I actually prefer. I don't like being around sober people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's They're horrible. Drag. Also, they, Dave on the road he car- carries around a little speaker and there's always jazz music where, wherever he goes. That's cool. He just carries around like a- after the show we're like taking pictures of people or signing stuff yeah. or whatever. And Dave just has this awesome. Like uh, affinity, just like are you? It's, it's not like you foist it on people. There's just always a beautiful soundtrack happening, mm-hmm. and then when you're not there, it's it's a bummer because we we're, we live in abject <laughs> well, silence. One one of you could get a speaker. Uh, <laughs> no, we're we're too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Watts uh, was at the Harmon Quest uh, premiere, and yeah, he, was, he he gave me a free sample of his uh his the beta test of his cartridge that yeah, he's developing. Reggie Watts is oh, trying to develop cartridge? a weed cartridge. Oh. Yeah. It's great, it was good, great time right? for weed just vapes. Just as they're about to be banned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's how... Did you read the New York Times thing about the the bust in Wisconsin, the two guys? No, that, no. I guess oh, they, like, they were doing, like... Yeah, I I, th- I, 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 get, I, get, I didn't understand this whole vaping thing. It was just like this running gag happening because Cody was a fucking... Uh, what are those things called? J- Vapor. Jewels. Jewel. She yeah. was a jewel She's hound. Jewel and and I'm so glad she got scared off of it, whether it was valid or not, because I just hated that she was like sucking down nicotine like a... Because I was a smoker until I was 32. And anyways, Amy, like, get mm-hmm. off my lawn. Good night. Um, <laughs> But I, 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 I guess what it is is that because pot's not legalized everywhere, and then vape cartridges, so they kind of open they the like window. So it's yeah. like, yeah, and like they, they, it's just it, it. There's a like a. It's like it's like making gin in a bathtub. Like like there's just a lot of invitation mm-hmm. in, for people to like homebrew, you know, v- weed juice, oil, <laughs> yeah. and it's like you put anything in there that you think gets the job done, and, and I, yeah. apparently something that some Vitamin people are putting e, in. Apparently. Like, Vitamin E oil they were using. Yeah, and that is and that what makes your lungs it, turn it into... Your, it was yeah. linked, but yeah. who knows. Yeah. It seems that it was, yeah, like Dan was saying, it was just more tainted, specific tainted yeah. stuff that was gray market stuff. But, yeah. but vitamin E is used in legal stuff. I don't know. There, but I mean... There's been no studies about how safe or unsafe vaping is. Like, I no. don't think we've ever done. No, we're we're in right. really good one. I yeah, apl- that's, I, that's, I apply vitamin E oil uh, to my lungs topically, <laughs> <laughs> and that's been fine. Yeah, but it's weird they're banning flavored tobacco cartridges, which I'm that's certain good. I'm fairly certain they're not linked to any of the anything. It's like a single case. I don't think is linked to actual. Flavored no. tobacco. No, mm-hmm. those, no, that's just linked to uh, we don't want our children to die of cancer. Sure, that's that's 
because they're does it give you cancer? Does vapor? Uh, no, no, no one the, knows. the tobacco products that are that are like candy floss flavored that they're uh, that they're not marketing to children, mind you. Right, but does the vaping yeah. itself does that actually lead to cancer or is it no? Just I don't know. They don't, that they don't know. Them on they don't what's really know. Available as they cigarettes. don't know. They say we'll all some find heavy out metals. Once. Yeah. There are some heavy metals in uh, vaping. Right, that's the thing. There's metal pieces, and when you get heated up, some of the yeah. the molecules. Fly I, off yeah. the surface of the metal, and that's definitely because I, I use C, I use the CBD vape pens, um, because uh, I'm I don't I'm old, sure, and, uh, <laughs> and I don't want my bones to hurt. Yeah, <laughs> but and those I and I love those. Those are great for like arthritis. And I, I did a little puff off of a DMT pen, and I, uh, <laughs> uh, I oh I like it. And you yeah, saw I, the dwarves I, that no, build I, time. I. I, I, I uh, I've never I, done I, I'm, that. I'm pretty sure I, I hung out with a palm tree for about 15 minutes. Right? Wait, are like, you like, serious? You did uh, DMT? I, out, of a, out of a pen, like a, like a vape <laughs> pen. <laughs> with a yeah. pen? I thought DMT was sort of a... You free base uh, The, the so idea of it coming sense. in a pen is kind of like... Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's not, it's not as strong. I've never done DMT properly, but I, I did it yeah. out of a pen... And there was a, like a Joshua tree, and I was like, "Hey, buddy, are we fucking." We, we, I, I was groove chickens for a while, and then then, then it was over. Mm-hmm. Jeff was. Yeah, it only chickens. lasts like fifteen minutes, yeah. right? Yeah. Joe Rogan's a big DMT guy. Who? Joe Can't Rogan. Get enough. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's like an expert on DMT mm-hmm. and other and and, and other. Uh, uh, psychedelics. Yeah. I'm too old to try transformative stuff. Like I'm not gonna. Yeah. Like I maybe maybe think maybe I would do ayahuasca before I'm fifty. I'd like to do that. Yeah. Like let's do it. Of, yeah. Let's, let's do, do it on the final Harmontown. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I'm yeah. in. Yeah. We we just but we get Jay Foley, Spencer, Dan, me, Curtis Armstrong, and we fucking uh, and we just we just do ayahuasca. All right. Because I like that ayahuasca at least is kind of like transparent about it. They're like, this is probably gonna be awful. Yeah, you're gonna I puke just, in a bucket while you're yeah. but don't you uh, like, don't, 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 don't you barf for a while? Don't, don't you have to like go puke for? Like, There's a, a lot like, of yeah, drugs yeah. that are poisonous, but but ayahuasca is a poison that's drugginous. <laughs> <laughs> has, has, has anybody here done ayahuasca proper? Right, yeah. Two or three. All right. Did you go out of town or did you like Costa Rica or? <laughs> that's not, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, I that's what you because yeah. you wanted to be with the legit uh, shaman. Yes. Yeah, I did. I yeah. did it in Bushwick. Yeah. <laughs> Next to a guy. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to right. talk to so angels, Brooklyn, you were, 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 you, were you at a house or like a party? Or what, where, where did you do it? I was uh, hanging out with a friend and there was a shaman. They flew in. Oh, they you're flew. kidding. They you, ever, you had a friend that could fly in uh, a shaman into, into Brooklyn. But that's the shittiest part of ayahuasca is the shaman. Bullshit spirituality. <laughs> no, but he's the guy that tells you where to barf and where not to barf yeah. and things like that, right? Yeah. I want to do it. All but right. I, I don't want to do this, like the touristy thing where you have to go be in a waterfall of Machu Picchu or whatever the fuck. Like, I, I would, I'd rather I, go to Brooklyn and do it. Brooklyn, I want to do it but by with the, the book. I, wanna, I will do it like however the people tell me to do it because I do not want to go off the rails. It's, prob- it's probably illegal and stupid to say that we're going to do the, we're gonna, the finale of Harmontown for probably. we're all going to be on ayahuasca. Well, also right? yeah. like take six hours. Like, we can't you do take it. six hours. Well, DMT. Holy shit. But the, 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 act, the, the effective drug in ayahuasca is DMT. Is it? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I did that in a pool. <laughs> yeah. That no, just comes I, in a I, pen. I, yeah, and you don't even have to get a shaman. <laughs> <laughs> Pocket shaman, yeah. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's boss is coming over for dinner. I Uh-oh. haven't made the casserole. <laughs> Hello, I'm Pocket Shaman. <laughs> <laughs> I can't trip. That'll be six hours. Yes, you can. Just one hit. I'm a pen. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, dwarves build time. I'm back. Now make that casserole. <laughs> But aware yeah. of the fact that casserole doesn't matter. Thank you, Pocket <laughs> <Yeah>. Shaman. <laughs> God, I wish it were 10 o'clock so we could end the show on that joke. <laughs> yeah, chemical really. release by DMT may be the chemical release in your brain when you die. <laughs> <laughs> Remember FDIC. <laughs> I, 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 I just did a little bit of it. I didn't get super duper high, but I, there was a tree, and we had a thing, and it was uh, it was kind of a romantic moment with a tree. Yeah. I'm going up to the storm uh, area 51 thing. Oh yeah, so I think <laughs> I, that would be a Friday, good time right? to do DMT. <laughs> that's this Friday. It, yeah. Didn't Keanu Reeves say he was going to fucking Is make he it? Going to go there? I don't know. I, I, I don't apparently, know. he tweeted and said like, "I'll see you there." Yeah. So um, like, what, what, like so I like, think we should do a test run on a normal military base first. <laughs> 
just to make sure this is a good idea yeah. before we go to the one that maybe no, but I, I think I think Area 51 you know is got, probably yeah. I, I think they have a like a, a fence outside of a fence and you have to get through that fence first they have sensors for like the miles and miles of desert surrounding them before right. you get yeah. to the fence you don't get to the fence before but it's not going to be uh, like 900,000 people it, let, yeah. let's, let's no. say it was well, 7 yeah, seven thousand. Well, people. the one, the oh. one I'm going to is 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 just like they're calling it the base camp, and it's they're they're not near the the right. base, and they're not going to storm the base. No, you got to split up. You got to have a bunch you of UFO fucking, people. And, you got to split uh, up. You got to fucking you got to do it from all sorts yeah. of different angles. Right. You know what? You should you well when you're you should go storm base Borden when you're in Canada. Base Borden? Yeah, it's a it's a military base. I'm going to do uh, Fort. Uh, what's, what's the one? That, Fort Wayne. What's the one that's way up there? Yeah. Is that Fort Wayne? No. Fort Wayne? No, I don't know. No, what's the one that's way up in the fucking uh, Yukon and shit? Um, oh, I, don't Fort, Fort, I don't know. I'm Fort, Canadian. I don't go north. Right. I can't believe you Canucks still have an army after we kicked your ass in 1812. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we won. Oh, uh, shit. Well, the, some of the telegrams did, still haven't made it through. Yeah. Did, right. did you guys burn down our White House? <laughs> shit, you know, the reason oh, that happened... Oh, shit! That was an insurance scam. <laughs> We wanted to build a new one. Yeah. And you paid for it. <laughs> I read that the War of 1812 was completely because uh uh like the the we had hit the tipping point of like how aggression moved just faster than communication. Like it was just mm. sort of like people would like write a letter going like, "Wait, no, we didn't know what." Yeah. <laughs> like, like they were going to liberate Canada. The, the Americans were going to liberate Canada from the British, and then they came up and they went, hey, these people don't want to be liberated. <laughs> we, right. We're always is, so shocked is that about when that. Andrew Jackson was fighting the Battle of uh, New Orleans and all that shit? Like, the, the, that, that war was over, and he was still kicking dick around there, and, and they, they're like, hey, the, the boat has a letter that says we, hmm. it's over. Yeah, and, yeah, and also it's he, a war that only Canadians care about. No Americans care right. about the War of eighteen twelve. You know what's amazing now is that fucking Tim it. Hortons yeah. has. Uh, th they never had a burger. Now they have a burger, but it's fucking Beyond Burger. So they they now have only vegan burgers there. They've never had a fucking <laughs> burger before. Don't fucking. I hear, I heard that. <laughs> you can now get a fucking. Oh, and they have a ve they have veggie yeah. Beyond sausage. You can get a fucking sausage McMuffin. Yeah. You can't get she, that in the she States. She was appraising your Segway uh, infrastructure, and I was, yeah. I was like, you can't leap from whatever we were yes, talking about to burgers. <laughs> the, show's, the show's fucking over, Dan. Yeah, we're I don't the, give a shit we're, anymore. We're the... <laughs> I'm going to do ayahuasca not on the show. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm not, and then I'm not even going to... This is my last show. I quit. <laughs> we, got, we got a Jeff off the chain. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are we going to do, Dan and Spencer, after the Harmontown is done? Are we just going to fuck off another night, or are we just going to... I would like the two of you we... to continue to do uh, commercials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I, no, I have no, to say, and this is, no, this is no disrespect, Dan, my favorite part of Harmontown is going and doing the ads with Spencer. No, I, with... no sleep till Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a goodie. That was incredible. We got to give it up for Church and Bra and Brendan who who make all the ads fucking d like d right. delicious. Uh, yeah. Oh there. Oh, yeah. It's it's Church's good advice and Brendan's ability to make us sound like we know what we're doing. It's fucking great. I love it. It's it's we we go in there. We 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 just goof off for five minutes and we sell underwear. Yeah. Do you think you'll still all be friends or or more to the point, have you guys become friends? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Friendship yeah. with me, though, it's yeah. kind of a mixed bag. <laughs> <laughs> Get used to it. <laughs> but I got a pool now. Yeah, I got and one you, of those. I got right a pool. Me, so. Yeah, I, I come over, but your pool's full of cameras. <laughs> 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 I don't think I can swim it's in like, your pool. It's fucking I, creepy. Yeah, I I pull them out. Also, there's right. there's small cameras, but yeah. they film loads <laughs> of. <laughs> I don't know. That's a yeah, call back uh, to my yeah yeah yeah, yeah I don't know. a ro rolling like like uh, is he trying to end the show? I'll help him. I'll help him. <laughs> so have you, have you got the underwater shit all rigged up? Like so you can you can do your I dives. Got, I got, I just have two yeah I have two underwater cameras that I I made little rigs that I it takes about you know I I get up in the morning I put them in the in the pool and uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the drunkest I've been in the last year was at your pool because we just like day drinking in a pool in the the heat of the valley sun. Yeah. And then you just fucking wrecked. Yeah. And then we went to Baroni's and we had like red wine. Like, yeah, that was bad. Yeah, it can get nasty. Yeah. 
I kind of miss your, it. Your, yeah. your, your house is here. your house is very large. How, how much of the house have you actually used? Because there, there's parts of that house that's never going to be occupied. I just used the uh, room two thirty two. I don't know. I tried to, I tried, I tried, I tried to riff the uh, what's the shining. Your, your house room. is enormous. How, how many of your bathrooms haven't you pooped in? Uh, I have not pooped in the guest bedroom bathroom. Oh. Uh, That's I, polite. Uh, let's see. Poop. <laughs> what about that that exterior one? Uh, I pooped in there okay, while the decorators were there, yeah. and I, that's how I found out I will never poop in there again because the door to that one right. is like glass. and oh. Yeah, you could see right in it. Yeah, right? it's like I'm a standing wiper. I'll just say it. Oh, mm-hmm. well, yeah. And before you fucking freak out, that's 40% of the public, so fuck off. Is there, an, is there how, another how do, way? How do you arrive at that number? To, 40% of the public? By researching it after I found out that not everyone is a standing wiper in, like, season three of 40? Community. Yeah, you, do, you're, not a stand, you're not a stand wiper fully, are you? How do you, how do you wipe while still sitting? I don't, you lean uh, forward. You, you're a stand wiper? Yeah. You lean real you're forward. a stander wiper? I got work to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It, it, it's the God work. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Is the work explaining why you stand up and wipe your butt? <laughs> We're you just getting it. Yeah. Get like, in like, there. Like, getting it, I mean, it's already getting like, the right angle on it. Mm. There. I just like how. My, when am I supposed to stop wiping? Anyway, when there's a roll of toilet paper. There's a toilet that will clog if you fill it with the toilet paper, yeah. and there's an ass that has plenty of shit for the <laughs> roll of toilet <laughs> yeah. paper. So I'm like. Yes, I'm standing. Why does standing help that because process? I'm Because, like, sitting and, like, doing all this, that's, that's just yeah. a confident person who's like, well, my ass has yeah. a certain amount of poop in it, and I'm going to just reach yeah. back and do these things. Well, kind I don't of know. a I just princess wasn't... sits there like this. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, that ought to oh. do it. Yes. There. I have to look at every wipe and be like, yeah. okay, so that's like, I, I, I compare it you to a swatch from Home I'm Depot. I'm like, uh, <laughs> Six more wipes to go. I'm only at yeah. like an acorn. Yeah. Like three flushes. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to make an executive comptroller uh, decision right now. <clears throat> Hermantown lasts another year until we get to the fucking yeah bottom of this. Woo! The fans I are loving it. But like you, you, you stand up and yeah. just no. And now, no, well, you don't I'm, stand up and reach between your legs. Is that what you just mimed? Wait, you stand up. Is it is it front to back or back to front? Front to back, for fuck's sake. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's front, how you front, avoid well, it's, it's for, for, for us that stand, it's down to up yeah. because yeah. we're standing. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't reach between your legs and pull shit towards your fucking yeah. vagina. That's how you get an effect. Why not just sit and kind of gently like lean over to the side and do that? Because I well, I I'm going to I'm not going to pretend I made this Ben Franklin like decision <laughs> like, "Oh, a wise man always stands up." I obviously like I don't think our mommies I, I, when you're a little kid, you wipe standing up pretty much. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. As a matter of course. Oh. Otherwise, you fall in. You just, I, like, I, yeah, I, well, I, have, I just think your parents seats. are like helping you wipe your ass like yeah. in the beginning, and then like it's I like, was if, never helped. Yeah. <laughs> Either I that or I, I never. I wasn't. learned on the mean streets of Tustin, California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tustin. <laughs> I, I just, I, I assume socialization. I mean, I really don't yeah. think it was like, I, 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 I truly made it to the age of like 37 before I found out that not everyone stands up when they wipe their ass. And that in fact, a vast majority of people do not. Well, I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's weird. I, I don't I know. I wouldn't know how to do it. I then I tried to do it at once and I was like, well, that's just yeah. out. That's a complete. I mean, it's like this is a thing that you've done every day. It was like it's yeah. like sw- switching to left. I'm comfortable standing. I'm comfortable with standing. It gets the job done, and like you said, yeah. we got work. It's not to like do. you're ever gonna have to watch. <laughs> Cliffhanger! <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Let's give it up, Dave Foley, everybody. <laughs> We're gonna watch him take a poop, Canadian style. <laughs> Spencer Crittenden. Let's give it up for Nolan, Church, Zach, everybody here at the Harmon Tiny Tiny Town. I'm your controller, Jeff Davis, Spencer. Your mayor, Dan Harmon. Thank you so much. There's only so many left. Let's make them count, shall we? And let's all wipe our butts however we find ourselves happy. Drive fast and take chances.
Zach, you got me. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.